Hi everybody, and welcome back to the Raven. Apparently, uh, sir, we could have used you a few minutes ago. I'd better let him read his newspaper if I don't have any pressing questions. I'd better let him read his newspaper if I don't have any pressing questions. Wait, what? Alright, so I'm missing something from the professor, so... A two prints that might help me. So check. Professor Lewis here. How can I help you, Constable Zell? I'd like to have an help, but... Whoever was in this compartment was wearing gloves. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Check his violin case. Of course he won't. He's hiding something. Should I distract him? Then you can have a look in his case. Yeah. What do you suggest? I I could tell him there's a suitcase full of money in the next carriage. If it's a thief, he'll definitely want to take a look at it. I don't think he'll fall for that. Or I can insult him and then run away. He'll try to catch me and you'll have a chance to look in that violin case. Now that I think about it, like, this is a reminder. I have to Stop. attend to on my own. He would be expecting a bit much from a little boy. Little boy? You must be kidding. Uh, sorry, uh, Sheriff, but your idea about distracting him is good all the same. So long. So long, -er.
This is by using this. That makes no sense. The violinist would close the window immediately, and I wouldn't have enough time to search his violin case. Keeping since it was left here unattended. When I picked it up, the cover unmatched. I never put my violin unattended. Ah, then no one else could have put this purse in your case. Um, someone must have snuck it in. Thank you. Ah, uh ah, -huh, for sure. And you have a pistol in the case because. I don't owe you an explanation. It's mine. I have a gun license. Now, take the damn purse to the Baroness and leave me in peace. Just get lost. It won't be that easy. I report the incident to the Italian authorities in Venice. Oh, Inspector, did you find the Baroness's purse? I did indeed. You did? Out of my way, James. at your service. The purpose of the trip. May I ask you where this beautiful train is taking you? <laughs> to the mad house, I'm afraid. One is close to the brink of insanity with this constant shaking and rattling. Have you ever tried flying, Baroness? <laughs> Do you know how little lucky one is permitted upon an aeroplane? It defies all reason and good taste. Burglary at the museum. Have you heard about the burglary at the British Museum? Heard about it? I'm directly affected by it. How so? I'm in charge of the Friends of the British Museum. And for your information, I'm financing the exhibition. Exhibition? What exhibition? The exhibition in Cairo. <laughs> Where did you think we were going? The eyes of the Sphinx were supposed to be exhibited together for the first time in decades. Now that one of them is gone, the exhibition will be rather less sensational than we'd hoped. On the other hand, there's a chance that all the uproar will generate more attention, and that the exhibition will still be a great success. Oh, perhaps, but we wanted to show them both together. That was the whole point. Can you tell me anything about your fellow passengers, Baroness? No, not really. I hardly care to end up in here with me. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Lucien is here, the professor. Oh, the eye of the Sphinx that was stolen belonged to his collection. Professor Lucien is an Egyptologist. <laughs> but of course. As director of the Egyptian department at the British Museum, he has to be, although maybe to really upset. Director Thomas told me he was a nervous break. I'll take my leave off you now, Baroness, and I do hope your journey becomes more bearable. Ah, yes, indeed, Inspector. Constable. James. Right. Let's see if I can talk to Mr. Doctor. Hello. 
Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. Ah, Mr. Zerner. I've been wondering why you're wearing gloves. Are your hands really so sensitive? Or are you cold? Nah, well, it's an old habit. As a doctor, one is so conscious of all the pathogens, bacteria, and viruses that surround us. Though, of course, perhaps I do tend to be a bit too cautious. I know exactly what you mean. As a policeman, I sense subterfuge and lies everywhere. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. I made the acquaintance of... Alright, so I need to go and talk to Dr. The large unfold. No, not the map. The train cut many. Not on the map. The butler, this James, seems to have escaped the Baroness. Hello. Good day to you, sir. Can I be of any assistance, sir? I wanted to ask you a few questions. Burglar in London. Where did you and the Baroness board the train? In Paris, sir. The Baroness was there on behalf of a charity that she supported for many years. So, you weren't in London when they broke into the British Museum? We may have been, actually. We left for Dover bright and early the morning after the burglary. But it was in Paris when we first heard of it. The morning paper in London didn't mentioned the unfortunate event, sir. And just two days later, you're on a train bound for Switzerland. The Baroness certainly gets around. Indeed, sir. We are practically always on the go. What can you tell me about the Baroness? Nothing, sir. A butler does not tattle. Is James your real name? If you'll pardon me, a rather odd question. Are you really named James? That would be a lucky coincidence in your line of work. My name, sir, is Clive Alfred Inch. Alf your second name is Alfred. Yet the Baroness calls you James. Madam considers James to be the only forename suited. That's Bruce Wayne's bottle. since the Thirty Years' War, hasn't it? Shrapnel from a bomb dropped by a fucker would not have wounded me in the Thirty Years' War, sir. No, of course not. Goodbye, James. Or Alfred. The 
This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door and in front of it, the engine. Someone broke off the radio's antenna. This could be a long trip to Istanbul. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard to open packages. These days nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. What's the weather in Brexit? In Brent United Kingdom, it's 15 degrees Celsius Alexa. with completely cloudy sky. What's the weather in Brexit? In Brexit United Kingdom, it's 15 degrees Celsius with showers. Tonight, you can expect some clouds with a chance of light thunderstorms, with a low of 12 degrees. Baroness von Trebitz. She's finance lady, isn't she? Indeed, sir. I found the purse. David Kreutzer, a violinist from Austria, had it. Hmm, probably nothing to do with our kids. All the same, good work. I'll get back to work now. Good. Right, one sec. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to basically uh, read the the newspaper and examine something to get something so yeah the you know, wind is really no place to be reading the newspaper i better go back inside Relaxes the nerves and maintains domestic tranquility. Luna's drops if you don't want to bother your husband. <laughs> John Settis won the Formula One World Championship for the first time on Saturday. 
He also won the World Championship in motorcycle racing from 1956 to 1960, making him the only man in motorsports to win World Championships in both motorcycle and Formula One events. Hmm, not really my cup of tea. Too loud, too fast, too much exhaust. Let's see if there's any news. Blah, 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 blah. Eye of the Sphinx. One or two prizes. You, extraordinary pure ruby. 2000 BC, etc., etc. Old news. And here, shocking burglary. Professional thieves surprised by museum guard Charles Langley and Constable Robert Oliver of Scotland Yard. Explosion. Constable Robert Oliver from Scotland Yard. He was there when the first eye was stolen. Now he's guarding the second one. That's that's what I just want to read. I mean, I might have read that in the in the second part. Or the third part, I can't remember now. After when I basically done this, like this thingy, like the next time I need to save. I don't know, or I might just play this. Inspector Legrand, anything to report? Uh, the Robert Oliver. Constable Robert Oliver. Is it possible that I read your name in the newspaper? Ah, could be, sir. Could very well be. Robert was there when the first eye of the Sphinx was stolen. Why were you in the museum? Did you spot something from outside? Well, sir. I noticed that the door was ajar, which was suspicious. And it's my duty to investigate, sir. Scotland Yard gave him a commendation and assigned it to me as a liaison. A great honor, sir. Alright, guys. I'm gonna end it here. So, yeah, basically, um, for me, um, if you guys had enjoyed this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. And. I'll see you guys in a minute in the next recording session that will be just about now.